Sarah sighed as she pulled into the driveway after a long day at work. She was looking forward to having a quiet evening at home with her husband, John. But as she entered the house, she immediately sensed something was off. John, she called out, but there was no answer. She walked into the living room and noticed John's jacket draped over the couch. Strange, she thought. He never leaves his things lying around. As she continued down the hall, she heard hushed voices coming from the bedroom. Her heartbeat quickened. Gripping the doorknob, Sarah took a deep breath and turned it slowly. The sight that met her eyes would be forever seared into her memory. John was in their bed, the sheets tangled around his bare legs, and next to him was a woman Sarah did not recognize. Time seemed to stop as the blood drained from her face. Sarah! John exclaimed, hurriedly grabbing a pillow to cover himself. This, this isn't what it looks like. Sarah could not find any words. Her hands trembled and her vision blurred with tears. The woman in their bed recoiled at Sarah's presence. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, she offered meekly. Ignoring the woman's apology, Sarah kept her eyes fixed on John. After a few excruciating moments, she managed to steady her voice enough to speak. How could you do this to us? To me? The words came out jagged like shards of glass. John reached for her hand. Sarah, please, let me explain. But Sarah recoiled from his touch. Shaking her head in disbelief, she choked back a sob. Without another word, she turned and walked away, the image of her husband's betrayal burning in her mind. Sarah walked briskly to her car, tears blurring her vision. She could hear John's footsteps behind her as he hurried to catch up. Sarah, please, he called out. Let me explain. She whirled around to face him, anger and hurt swirling inside her. Explain? How can you possibly explain this? She cried. John held up his hands imploringly. It was a mistake, a stupid, drunken mistake. It didn't mean anything, I swear. Please, you have to believe me. Sarah shook her head in disbelief. A mistake? You cheated on me in our bed. How could you do this to me, to our marriage? I'm so sorry, John pleaded. I never meant to hurt you. Please give me another chance to make this right. I promise I'll do whatever it takes to fix this, to fix us. But Sarah could feel nothing but the sharp sting of betrayal. I don't think I can ever forgive you for this, she said quietly. John's face crumpled in anguish. No, Sarah, please. I love you, only you. I'll do anything, anything. Sarah held up a hand to stop him. She took a deep, shuddering breath. I can't even look at you right now, she choked out. I just... I need space. I need time away from you to process this. She turned and continued to her car, ignoring John's desperate pleas behind her. As she pulled out of the driveway, tears flowed down her cheeks. Her hands gripped the steering wheel tightly as she drove, images of John's infidelity flashing through her mind. Sarah did not know how they would recover from this, or if they even could. But she knew one thing for certain. Her life would never be the same. Sarah drove aimlessly, unsure of where to go. The sun was setting as she found herself near the coast. Pulling into a scenic overlook, she parked and walked over to look out at the sea. The constant motion of the waves seemed to soothe her swirling emotions. Exhausted, Sarah settled into the driver's seat, reclining the chair back to try and get some rest. She tossed and turned fitfully through the night, images of John and that woman flashing through her mind whenever she drifted off. As dawn broke over the water, her phone rang, jolting Sarah awake. She didn't need to look at the caller ID to know it was John. Taking a deep breath, she answered. Sarah, thank God, John said urgently. Please just tell me where you are. Let me come to you so we can talk about this. I don't think I'm ready to see you yet, Sarah replied evenly. John's voice was strained. Baby, please don't do this. Don't shut me out. We need to work through this together. Sarah closed her eyes against a fresh wave of hurt. I just need some time, John. This isn't something I can just get over in a day. You really hurt me. I know, John said wretchedly, and I'm so sorry. But running away isn't going to fix anything. Come home, let me make this right. Sarah hesitated. Part of her wanted nothing more than to go back to the comfort of their life together. But she knew if she returned now, nothing would truly be resolved. I can't, not yet, she said finally. Please try to understand. John was quiet for a long moment. I don't want to lose you, Sarah, he said in a pained voice. I know, 
she whispered. I just need some space to think. I'll call you soon, okay? Sarah continued driving with no destination in mind. She needed time to process everything that had happened and decide what she wanted to do next. About an hour later, her phone rang again. Seeing it was John, she took a deep breath before answering. Sarah, I'm so glad you called back, John said quickly. Have you had time to think? Can we please meet up and talk about this? Sarah steeled herself before responding. I have thought about it, John, and I've come to a decision. John was silent as he waited for her to continue. I want a divorce, Sarah stated firmly. What? No, Sarah, you can't mean that, John pleaded desperately. I do mean it, she said coldly. I've tried to imagine forgiving you and moving past this, but I just can't see it happening. You betrayed our marriage in the worst possible way. I don't trust you anymore. John was audibly choking back sobs. Please, don't do this. I know I made the worst mistake of my life, but I love you. We can get through this together if you just give me a chance. Sarah closed her eyes against the pain in his voice, but she steadied herself and said sharply, It's too late for chances, John. I've made my decision. There must be something I can do, some way to fix this. Please, Sarah, tell me what you need, John begged. What I need is a divorce, she said coldly. I'll have my lawyer contact you to start the process. Before he could respond, Sarah quickly ended the call. Tears streamed down her face even as she remained resolute. She had meant what she said. It was over. Wiping her eyes, she continued driving towards an uncertain future. John was stunned into silence after Sarah stated her desire for a divorce. He racked his brain trying to think of something, anything to change her mind. When he spoke again, his voice was trembling. Sarah, please, I'm begging you. Don't end our marriage over this. I'll do anything to make things right between us again. Sarah considered his pleas carefully before responding. Anything? She asked pointedly. Yes, anything, John replied desperately. Fine, Sarah said after a long pause. I will consider forgiving you on one condition. John gasped in relief. Name it. I'll do whatever you ask. Sarah's voice turned cold. You will shave your head bald and never grow your hair again. You will also quit your job immediately. And from now on, your role will be caring for our home and serving me, dressed as a housemaid. You will refer to me as ma'am and follow my orders without question. John was stunned into silence once more. When he finally spoke, it was in a shaky voice. You, you can't be serious. Oh, I'm completely serious, Sarah snapped. Those are my terms. Take them or leave them. John's voice caught on a sob. Sarah, please, you can't ask me to do that. Isn't there any other way? No, those are my conditions, Sarah said sternly. What's it going to be? John hesitated for a long moment, fear and despair gripping him. But finally he whispered, Okay, if those are your terms for us to repair our marriage, I... I accept. Sarah let out a harsh breath. Good. I expect you home tonight to begin your new duties. And with that, Sarah ended the call with John, feeling a surge of vindictive satisfaction at his agreement to her terms. She knew it was cruel to make such extreme demands, but after the agony of his betrayal, a part of her wanted to punish him. Stealing her nerves, Sarah drove to a local barbershop. She asked the barber for a dramatic change, a short, flat-top haircut. As the buzzer sheared away her long locks, she watched her former self disappear in the pile of hair on the floor. The woman who emerged with severe geometric lines shorn close to her scalp was someone new, someone strong. Sarah paid the stunned barber and made her way home. John's car was already parked in the driveway when she arrived. Taking a deep breath, she entered the house. John rushed to greet her, shock washing over his face as he took in her radical new look. Sarah, what on earth did you do to your hair? She gave him an icy look. I decided it was time for a change. Speaking of changes, it's time for you to honor our agreement. She held out a frilly maid's uniform. Go put this on and report back here to begin your duties. John recoiled slightly. Sarah, please, think about what you're asking me to do. This is crazy. Her eyes flashed with anger. What's crazy is you thinking you can betray me and our vows without consequences. Now go put on that uniform and do as you're told. John's shoulder slumped in defeat. Yes, ma'am. He acquiesced weakly as he took the costume. 
Sarah watched him shuffle off, the beginnings of a smug smile on her face. She had brought him low, lower than she had ever envisioned possible. But for her broken heart, it was a start towards vengeance. Head held high, she waited for him to return, transformed into her servant. John retreated to the bedroom, uniform in hand, dread weighing heavily on him. He stared at the frilly dress with its lace apron and cap, repulsed. But he had agreed to Sarah's terms, insane as they were. Hands shaking, he slowly put on the humiliating outfit. John glanced in the mirror and recoiled at the ridiculous sight. Tears welled up in his eyes. How had it come to this? He knew he had destroyed Sarah's trust, but her vengeance seemed extreme. Perhaps he deserved it. Wiping his eyes, he steeled himself and went to face his wife. Sarah's eyes glinted with satisfaction when John appeared before her. Without a word, she went to the kitchen and retrieved clippers, gesturing for John to sit. Sarah, please. You've made your point, John pleaded as she snapped the clippers on. Her face was stone. Silence. Hold still. John squeezed his eyes shut as the clippers ruthlessly sheared away his hair. He sobbed quietly, gripping the chair. At last it was done. Bald and completely degraded, he hardly recognized himself. Sarah shoved a hand mirror in his face. Take a look at my new houseboy. Her voice dripped contempt. John stared at the broken man gazing back at him. Sarah, he choked out. Enough sniveling, she snapped. Clean up this mess, then get started on dinner. Hop to it.